Hello again, this is Flow754 with the second part of the Saints Row 4 modding tutorial series. This is going to be more of a theoretical video, as I'm going to give you some tips you will definitely have to consider while creating your models for Saints Row 4. For that, I've prepared a visualization file, which I'm going to show you in Blender, my preferred 3D modeling application. And here we can already see five uh, different meshes. Those are the main blend shapes of the player character you can create in Saints Row 4. So uh, it's very important that you create a 3D model for each of these variations. So um, first I created a, a 3D model that fits the male base character right here. And from that I deformed this model so it fit every other shape as well. One thing that's enormously important for that is that while creating your 3D model, you always pay close attention to your topology and make sure it's as good as possible. Because this topology does not only have to support um, this particular shape here, but also um, has to support, in this case, the female anatomy and um, some more stre stretched bodies like um, the muscular one or the overweight one. So, uh, yeah, obviously all of these have to have the same topology, otherwise using them as blend shapes won't work. Also something to consider right away is polygon density, which basically just means your model should have a relatively high amount of polygons so that it deforms nicely within Saints Row's wacky animation style. It is also recommendable to use the player character as a base mesh in modeling your uh, clothing item, or at the very least um, project some of its topology on the clothing item after you created it in some other fancy modeling application with some different modeling methods like sculpting for example. Something you probably um, noticed by now is the heavy clipping issues that I'm having right here. As I already said in the last tutorial, these are not going to be present in game because of the way scenes show hides polygons of the player character's body that are behind clothing items. It's not a dynamic feature, so it does not automatically uh, find the polygons which have to be hidden. The, the, these are specified in the game files, so that is why we duplicated an item that roughly covers the same areas of the body as our custom 3D model. Because that way you will ideally have something like this, um, where all the clipping parts of the character are hidden. Now those are my main tips for modeling. Um, let's get to texture types. Saints Row 4 supports some basic texture types like diffuse maps and normal maps. Also specular maps, but getting those to work might require you to fiddle with a few values in the converter script. I'll probably make a follow-up tutorial on that as well at a later date. Additionally, you can make use of a few more advanced texture types like glow maps for example. Glow maps essentially allow you to specify a glowing area and the color it glows in. So if you want to have some parts of your customization item glow, you will have to use one of those. If you want to fine-tune the glow intensity, the smartest way to do so is tweaking the self-illumination value in the sr underscore file. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sensor 4 also has support for sphere maps, which work in a similar way as matcaps and ZBrush. And you can use sphere maps, uh, for example, if you want to create custom reflections. They work very well for metal parts, but might as well be used to create the characteristic specular highlights of some kinds of fabric, such as velvet. There's also support for pattern maps, one of Saints Row's very own texture types that allow for color customization in-game. There are two kinds of pattern maps, BCM pattern maps and RGB pattern maps. With BCM pattern maps, you can define areas of your model by coloring them blue, cyan and magenta. Those colors will then be dynamically replaced when the player enters a color selection screen, and multiplied by the diffuse map. RGB pattern maps work almost like that, but you define areas by coloring them red, green and blue. Contrary to BCM pattern maps, they don't require an additional diffuse map, since they can contain baked ambient occlusion. Something to notice that Sensor 4 has multi-material support, so you can use as many materials as you want on a single 3D model. This allows for great artistic freedom in uh, shader and texture combinations. For example, you could have some parts of your model uh, use only a diffuse map and a normal map, and other parts could be shared with uh, like a sphere map. To every material you add to your model, you have to assign one of Sensor Forge shaders later on in the process. Note that every shader allows for different texture combinations, so make sure you don't combine textures in a way no shader supports. You can, of course, leave out certain textures of a shader though. So, um, now that you know all of this, the textures you're using can be as high res as you want, 
Um, but consider performance. These textures will have to be rendered in real time, so don't use unnecessarily big textures or else you're going to have uh, performance hits. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I know it's a very short one, but I do have a homework assignment for you. Until next time, I want you to create your own 3D model, considering the tips I gave you in this tutorial, as well as only using the textures I mentioned. Yeah, next up we're going to get right into Maya 3D, where we'll get your art game ready. See you guys next time.